Welcome everybody. My name is uh, Wendy Mechtens. Um, well, welcome today at the online masterclass, which will be provided by Mr. David Wingley. Uh, before we start, uh, there are a few things I would like to share with you. Uh, your microphone is muted. Please keep it muted the whole session. This way we can uh, avoid uh, background noise. If you have a question, please make use of the uh, Q&A functionality. You can find it on the bottom of your page. So don't use the chat functionality, but use the Q&A functionalities to submit your question. Mr. David Dingley will try to answer all the questions at the end during the Q&A session. Furthermore, this online masterclass will be recorded. All participants will receive the recording plus the slides afterwards. And now I want to hand over to Mr. David Dingley. Wendy, thank you very much for that warm welcome. And I'd like to welcome all the participants to this one hour masterclass that we have together. As you know, the topic we're going to discuss is artificial intelligence for supply chain management. It's quite a big topic, you know, um, two very interesting words here when we're looking at artificial intelligence. Uh, it stirs a lot of emotion and kind of futuristic perspectives. Where is this leading? Where are we today? And supply chain management is definitely an area which is very, very ripe for the use of artificial intelligence. And as we will see, as I go through the session, one of the main reasons is the amount of data that there is in the supply chain. So it should make an interesting topic. And of course, if you work within supply chain or within artificial intelligence, then the combination of the two is really going to be an interesting adventure for you in your future career. But before we start, I'll just say something very briefly about myself. For those of you who obviously don't know me, I do have an engineering background. It's an electrical engineering background. I did work for 10 years in manufacturing, mainly doing industrial engineering. I then started working for the Maastricht School of Management quite a long time ago now. So I'm in my 21st year working for MSN. I've lectured in 30 countries in topics such as supply chain management, operations management, strategy, and entrepreneurship. I am Maltese by nationality. I am currently on the Mediterranean island of Malta, where I also practice as a management consultant. And that has kept me very close to industry. And I've been doing this for as long as I've been working for the Maastricht School of Management, where I do consult industry, both in the manufacturing and the service environments. I also serve as a business advisor for Malta's main government entity that supports startup businesses, which is Malta Enterprise. I do chair a panel of judges on an annual basis where we select the best entrepreneurs of the year. And I'm proud to say I have launched a book this year called The 20 Faces of Services. And it does cover, you know, I wouldn't say it's about supply chain, no, but it does cover elements of good service. So anyone interested in operations management, of course, will find that very interesting as an interesting read there. So what are we looking at when we discuss artificial intelligence? Where, where are we today? Today for many people and for a number of industries, and again, depending on which country you are coming from, we might call artificial intelligence still sort of something new, uh, something about tomorrow rather than today. But where are we going to be in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time, or even, for that matter, five years' time? And the prediction is that artificial intelligence is going to be the next revolution. It has already started. It is going to transform the way many, many industries work. And it is also going to transform the kind of jobs that are going to be available in the future as well. Some jobs will disappear and new ones that possibly till today, we cannot even imagine 
will be created. So some very interesting times ahead to see where all this is going to take. So it's going to have a very profound influence on our business world and in our personal lives as well. So this is where we are going. And as I said in my introduction, we are already seeing big advances from artificial intelligence towards the logistics, towards the supply chain sector. So it is definitely an area worth experimenting and discovering to find out what could be done in this regard. Now, as you probably all know, there has always been this exponential curve that demonstrates the computing power, we would say. The prediction has always been that computing power like doubles every 18 months. And that actually gives rise to the concept of an exponential curve. Now, where is this leading? And a lot of predictions have been done. And this particular picture that you are seeing here comes from Ray Kurzweil's Law of Accelerating Returns, where the prediction is that we are going to reach the stage where computing power is going to be more intelligent than an individual. And we will eventually reach a stage where computing power will actually be more powerful than all human brains put together. Now, of course, some people might look at that with an element of skepticism or disbelief, but we are really, really moving fast in this direction. And there's nothing to say that within the next 20 to 30 years, we are going to definitely see the exponential curve really move up at a much faster rate. So very, very interesting times ahead, especially for those of you who are participating with us today in their early phase of their career. So if you're in your mid twenties, early thirties, you know, by the time you're 50, you need to say, what kind of world are you going to be living in? What kind of influence is artificial intelligence and technology going to have in your working life, in your industry, and in your business? So there's no stopping the rate at which we are seeing development. Now, why did I put pictures up of the port of Rotterdam? And there's one specific reason, because we all think that you know a lot of new things that we see related to artificial intelligence are just things happening today. But I was always extremely impressed. The first time I visited the port of Rotterdam was in the year 1998. And at that time, they were already using automated guided vehicles. There was no driver on the cars that were moving containers around the port. Now we're going back quite a few years here. And yet, technology was already at a very advanced stage. So the question definitely is, where are we today then? If all that time ago, we were already seeing this incredible use of technology, because it's not in a small way here. You have a truck moving around a port without people driving it. And looking at a two kilometer port, I could actually count the number of people actually present walking around. So there's a very, very high level of automation as well. So this is food for thought. What is the level of sophistication? What is the level of automation taking place in your organizations right now? So this is where, of course, we are going. Now, in 2016, the HL came up with this very, very interesting diagram, which they called the logistics trend radar. 
Uh, we're looking ahead. We're seeing what there is ahead of us. How far ahead? And they're thinking in two terms. What was going to be relevant within the coming five years? What was going to be relevant within five years plus? High impact and low impact. And the difference between high and low is really related to the level of disruption. The new business models that would emerge out of some specific advances taking place. Now, because this is the logistics trend radar, all the terms that are being used here are all related to supply chain. But what is of main interest in the high area? When we read things like Internet of Things, self-driving vehicles, 3D printing, big data, on-demand delivery, logistics marketplaces, super grid logistics, cloud logistics. These are in the high impact. And when they are all developing at the same time, because this is not sequential, one after the other, all you are seeing on this radar is all moving ahead at the same time. And therefore, one reinforces the other. And the range is so big. We are seeing things, obviously, like robotics. We see things like augmented reality, unmanned aerial vehicles, bionic enhancements, how to help people lift heavy things. So there are social and business trends we need to think of. And of course, the technology itself that is behind and backing all these new developments that we see. So all this happening at the same time is having tremendous impact on logistics. And logistics, we know, is one of the critical functions we see in supply chain. If you only see what is happening in the UK right now, where we are seeing people queuing up for miles to buy fuel, and then you realize, you know, there are no truck drivers or there aren't enough truck drivers to get these fuel trucks to the petrol stations. How do we start thinking about self-driving vehicles then? Don't we start realizing that, oh, therefore we do we need these technologies. What if people don't want to do these kinds of jobs anymore? Well, how does fuel get to the petrol station huh? where you want to go and fuel up your vehicle? You need someone to move it. You need that truck. You need that driver. So the question, are we reaching the stage where we're going to eliminate all this? And very often, because the advances in artificial intelligence and technology are moving at such a rapid rate, the blockages in the real world are not technical issues, really. I would say they are legal, they are political, and they ultimately are regulatory. These are where the problems are. Okay, we have a self-driving vehicle on the road. Who's responsible? Can you imagine the insurance companies if that vehicle has to crash? Is it the owner of the vehicle? Is it the guy who wrote the software? Is it the manufacturer of the vehicle? Who, who, is to, who is responsible if there is no human being in that vehicle? So the technology can drive the vehicle, but the problems tend to be beyond the technology. And in a way, this is what slows down huh? the capability of technology to actually become part of our day-to-day -day lives, because there are many complex issues that I think we have to appreciate and realize that these are complex issues, and it is important that they are resolved. So somebody needs to obviously get thinking and resolve them, because as we know, we can't stop technology. 
you might say, why are you showing us the same slide again? Well, the HL revised that slide that they created in 2016 to a more recent one than earlier this year. And still again, we've got the high and low impact. And what is hitting us now relevant in less than five years? What is now really close to us? Here we are, robotics and automation, internet of things, big data, very, very close to us. In fact, this is now, how we all talk about big data, robotics. Well, maybe not every company is using forms of robotics today, but it's going to come much faster than we think. Artificial intelligence is within less than five years over here. Notice, self-driving vehicle, still high impact, but is positioned beyond five years. But definitely something we're gonna keep an eye out within the next 10 years for sure. So these are issues that we really, really need to think of. And ultimately, if we are in the supply chain industry, we need to understand how they are going to impact on us. So artificial intelligence is already around. I mean, anybody who has a smartphone already knows that, you know, there is a high level of artificial intelligence in that phone already. You talk to it, it finds you the weather, it does this, it does that. Well, that's saying something, you know. So we're looking at things we are already taking for granted, but we are seeing artificial intelligence in stock trading, in medical diagnosis today, and we are seeing AI operating in very high levels of unstructured data as well. So it's become extremely sophisticated. So obviously we know we're looking at tremendous computer power. We're looking at big data because that is the energy, that is the food that artificial intelligence needs to produce very sophisticated results. Big dependence on cloud computing, especially where it comes to storage of data. But of course, there is an impact on people too, talent, skills, acceptance, expectations. So here we have the social, the business issues, uh, the difficulty to change your organization, the investment that it's going to take. And of course, cognitive enterprises, how we are using AI, obviously, for predictions of what is obviously coming ahead in that respect. So this is the beginning. Why now, we say? Because we are already seeing very, very high levels, very, very big volumes of data. And supply chain is one of the industries that tends to have the biggest, highest level of data when you see it as a chain, when you connect all the various entities that operate within a supply chain industry. So it's very, very sophisticated. And where ERP used to be, you know, you were king if you had an ERP system. But today, it's all about analytics. It's all about automation. It's all about robotics. And of course, companies always trying to think, how are we going to incorporate more technology, more AI into our organization? And this is the nice thing about digital technologies and supply chains, isn't it? because it is about integration. It is about integrating the various components in a chain. And as we know, very often, you are integrating different organizations in a chain, in a supply chain. The raw material owner is not the owner of the manufacturing plant, who is not the owner of the retail outlet, who is not the customer, who is not the same trucking company or shipping company or plane moving the goods throughout the chain. So we've got a large number of organizations, all with their own data, 
if we can integrate all this with technology and the high sense of artificial intelligence and linking devices, our barcode readers, uh, all the devices that we might be using in our organizations to create this Internet of Things platform as well. So now we need devices to be intelligent too, that everything we are using, that when a truck is moving, we know its location and how its location is being used for analytical reasons to predict delivery times, delays maybe, or rerouting. Everything, every device, every organization being connected together. But this is very, very interesting that we see. So this is where we are looking. Obviously, logistics is looking at the progress of machine learning because machines are learning on their own as well, where we've got sophisticated artificial intelligence coming in. And we are seeing more and more acceptance by industry, because this is important. The more industry accepts the technology, the more scope you have to develop. So this is, you know, a growth effect at the end of the day. Lots of studies done, McKinsey predict that it's going to create, you know, logistics industries of 4.2 trillion industry. Eh? And this is what AI is going to be doing for us. It's going to enhance and improve the industry, but it's also going to cut costs. And as we know, when you cut costs, you get two effects. We either make more profit or things might end up a little bit cheaper for the customer at the end of the day. So it's all good news for everybody involved in the industry. So there are tremendous opportunities. Companies that are gonna move ahead are going to be the ones gaining that competitive advantage. If they're gonna use data, if they are going for the scientific approach to decision-making, if they are going to have predictive supply chains, of course, based on artificial intelligence, they're going to be winners. Costs are gonna go down, efficiency is going to go up. And who is the ultimate beneficiary? You and me, the customer. We will receive our goods in time. Personalization is increasing. Personalized deliveries will get enhanced and much better. Nothing comes easy. Big challenges, big costs to implement artificial intelligence. We need to have big data sets. So you better start working to look into what data you are collecting. And definitely, you definitely need the right skilled workforce that can manage these sophisticated systems. There will always be ethical concerns. AI will be making decisions that no human will be able to say, oh, I know why we're going to deliver this way. Oh, I know why we're doing it. We won't know anymore. How did the intelligence, how did the system determine that this is the decision we should make? And as I told you, regulatory bodies are kind of trying to tell us, slow down. We can't keep up with the rate of development. We need legislation. We need to understand where responsibility and accountability lies from an industry point of view. Having said that, all studies that are seeing AI in supply chains are seeing organizations being more innovative. If you're looking at new product development and moving that to markets, it's happening much faster. Companies evolving, very agile, in other words, very flexible. Supply chains being able to modify according to changing world scenarios. Coping with ambiguity and uncertainty and a high level of optimization, therefore eliminating waste and therefore costs in the extended supply chain. So efficiencies go up in ways that you and I as employees, no matter how good we are, we just can't do. 
We just can't handle this amount of data. We don't have visibility of a global supply chain. It's too big. It's just too extensive. And we don't think anymore in terms of reaction. We need to be predictive. We need to be one step ahead of what's going to happen. And therefore, this is the link with forecast modeling as well, where we're looking at predictive analytics, say. We're eliminating manual processes, especially all repetitive processes, automate. Bring in the technology to do the routine work for you. And in that way, we're also seeing high levels of customization. So we don't only need to standardize with technology today. It is so sophisticated, we can also personalize. So costs are going down. Here we're looking at AI in procurement. Well, Singapore has been doing a lot of work over there. And they are looking at, for example, corrupt or negligent practices in procurement. There are algorithms that are looking for fraudulent activities in the way employees are carrying out purchases. EY are also doing similar things, looking for fraudulent invoicing. So algorithms looking for patterns, looking for anomalies at rates and speeds that of course you and I can't do. So procurement, will benefit tremendously. Manufacturing is benefiting. We talk about having lights out factories, meaning factories without people, fully automated. And you know, when you really think about it, if it's fully automated, you can switch off the lights and it's still operating. You don't, the robot doesn't need physical light to do its job. So that's a very interesting thing to think about where we are looking at fully automated, factories, meaning also they are actually making the production plan. Automation is making the production plan and converting that plan into work processes. So this is of course, highly sophisticated end of the manufacturing side. We are seeing tremendous movement and advantages with 3D printing. We will eventually have 3D printers in our home the way you know we have a normal paper printer. And when there's something you want to buy, well, you can download the program from the company and you don't even need anybody to bring it for you and you print it at home. But imagine the benefits in manufacturing. Eh? You print a spare part, which you're out of stock. And maybe within 30 minutes, you repaired your machine and kept going rather than waiting 24 or 48 hours until somebody delivered it to you. So we will be seeing many, many more advances in manufacturing and how 3D printing is obviously influencing that. The process, the chain is developing. Historical data, future trends, how is the artificial intelligence combining all this. How are we going to see the technology eliminating and reducing errors? Where we are seeing technology learning from past mistakes in ways that you and I can't learn. Or we might actually forget again in future. So very big advances in process development as well happening there. Planning. Infinite sources of information, we say. Understanding demand, which has always been the biggest nightmare in any organization, forecasting demand. How many variables do you look at in your normal forecast model? When today we are seeing artificial intelligence even coping with 200 variables from the weather to past sales to what somebody wrote on social media about your products and putting it all together to create predictive analytics and always reducing the error rate because this is what predictive analytics is all about in ways again that you and I we're not going to cope with measuring 200 variables luckily the technology 
can do it. So let's rely on the technology to do that. Can AI become a designer? We always say, you know, creativity till today belongs to human beings, eh? But there are already artificial intelligence programs that can design websites, for example. Just telling them what you want and they design it for you. We will be seeing artificial intelligence design products based on data that they will be collecting. And again, predictive analytics, looking at trends, looking at images of products, for example, from around the world. And they will design things in ways that will minimize raw material usage, improve quality, improve lead times. So we are seeing artificial intelligence already assisting in these dimensions as well. Logistics and warehousing. Automate your warehouse, we say. Where orders are coming in, those orders are going to your technology. And we now have a 24 seven warehouse, possibly even in the dark as well, where we have autonomous machinery handling all the movements within the warehouse. And as we said in our introduction, we are seeing the big improvements happening with the driverless autonomous vehicles. And probably we will be seeing that introduction first in commercial vehicles rather than you and I at personal domestic level. So this is the way we are seeing logistics developing. There's more happening, obviously. Remember, when you have people driving trucks, well, there's a whole legislation about drivers, eh? how much rest they need to have, how many hours they can drive before a break. And it's, it's all good because at the end of the day, you want the driver to be focused, to be capable of driving that vehicle. So I'm not criticizing the regulation, but what a difference, eh? If we can totally eliminate all that and have our truck driving 24 hours, well, all the truck will need to do is go and refuel, probably. That will be the only time it needs to stop. So we're going to see tremendous advantages in lead time, for example. How long it takes to deliver goods from country A to country B, or at least within the same country that is going to take the lead in experimenting with artificial intelligence in logistics, for that matter. We are seeing unmanned aerial vehicles, drones. I mean, we've got drones for military use today. There is no question that drone technology today can deliver your package to your house. So the problem is not the technology, whether it can find your address. The problem is legislation. Can we allow drones flying over domestic houses? Do we want to look up in the sky and see a hundred drones moving with packages all over the place? These are the questions, not whether it can or cannot be done, but imagine you have to deliver goods or parcels in rural areas where there aren't good roads and you can just send your drone over there, delivering maybe medical kits, emergency kits, in areas in the world which are difficult to reach, maybe those are the places we should be using these kinds of devices first, before we bring them to the big cities, so to speak. So it's not gonna be the technology that is holding anything back. It is us in the way we want to run the world, basically. Augmented reality. You know, where you really have your employees living in a 3D world, in a virtual world, eh? where these magic specs like, and you start seeing colors, you start seeing arrows, you start seeing words coming up on your screen. You know from where you have to pick something, you know where you have to deposit something. And again, 
big efficiencies happening in companies that use it and employees are not grumbling about it. So that's always good as well. Huh? Because if we expect employees to be using certain devices, then of course we've got to see the whole psychology of all this huh? and the impact that they have on people. But it seems to be working pretty nicely as well over there. If any of you heard about the Kiva system, these little robots that today Amazon have bought this company ages ago, basically, but today they have over 30,000 of these robots moving all goods within their enormous warehouses. It means you don't have people moving these things anymore. This is all automated. This is all artificial intelligence. This is all programmed. They all know what to do, when to do it, where to go. And you know what? They're not crashing into each other either because they are extremely well programmed in that respect. So big advances happening there. So when we see the use of AI within the logistics sphere, what are we seeing? Definitely we see the importance of big data analytics. Without data, you have nothing. We need to see the internet of things. What devices that we are using are connected to our IT system and the self-learning systems. This is, of course, the advanced machine learning that we see happening with artificial intelligence. These three together are giving us this digitized logistics platform. What is the output of all this? What are the gains at the end of the day? Process efficiency. We're seeing better interaction with customers. In other words, possibly delivering faster, understanding customer needs better. And at the end of the day, businesses are revising their business models, how to work, how to operate. We see intelligent logistics lowering costs, therefore building efficiency. And the three key areas we see these places happening is in terms of predictive analytics, demand prediction, in our inventory management, what do we have, where is it, how and when do we replenish, and fulfillment, delivery. Can we optimize delivery? When to make the delivery? How to route things? What to mix and match? And that's the key word then, eh? supply chain optimization. This is what AI is setting out to do. How can we ultimately optimize? So we're seeing artificial intelligence giving us what? This intelligent computer vision. Vision, literally, we're seeing scanners, surveillance, identification, robotics, self-driving vehicles. These all need intelligent vision. We are seeing auto auto automation in our workflow. Understanding documentation, reading unstructured data. And there's a lot of unstructured data in the supply chain. And of course, the predictive side of our logistics chain. Can we predict the future? Because we need to plan what we're going to pass and flow through our chain at the end of the day. So we need to have a very good foresight of what is happening in the future. So key areas where we're seeing advantages in AI. Definitely we're streamlining processes. Put in the data, analyze that data. AI can give us all this visibility in terms of what's happening. Therefore, when it comes to replenishment of inventory, moving inventory, we know where we are. We plan better, again, using all the data we have. And as I told you, the more variables going into your predictive planning systems, all the better. We know the weather, if we know what's happening on the roads, if we know what customers are ordering right now. Market shaping, what the customers want tomorrow, or how can we influence what customers want tomorrow? How do we design? to ensure we will get sales at the end of the day. 
and transportation, of course, the actual movement of goods. Much more intelligent movement, much more accuracy, and needless to say, if it's going to be automated again, all the better. So these are the things we see happening. Of course, there are many models that we can think of in terms of integrating our chain and all the kinds of data and IT management we need, because at the end of the day, risk management, of course, there's risk. There's always a probability factor, right? What about cybersecurity? All this data, all this communication going on between our devices. What about our data analysis? How do we store data? How do we access it? And how does all that link with our supply chain network? Because as you know, supply chain is a network. It's fast, it's global. How does it link? with our internet of things technologies, all our devices, our vehicles, our forklifts, our storage spaces, everything we have. How do we read? How do we involve suppliers in the chain? And therefore, how do we develop our logistics delivery system? Put all this together and make sure you have some good measures for your supply chain performance to see the impact that all this has. Challenges we see, undoubtedly, the system is complex. We're looking at cloud-based technologies here, large bandwidth that we need to power systems, specialized hardware. So it's not going to be an easy thing. There is going to be involvement, but there is scalability. You don't have to start at the biggest level. You can build your system, of course, you have to design it in a way that makes it scalable at the end of the day. So it's not something that's gonna just happen automatically. Of course, you have to think of costs of training. Of course, you're gonna to need to train people to run these systems, to design these systems, to, de to learn new things at the end of the day. So there's a cost there, but there's also an operational cost. Are we storing all this hardware? Are we, how are we gonna maintain it? How do we replace it? Because technology keeps improving. So we're gonna to have to keep reinvesting in technology at the end of the day. So these are challenges that every organization is obviously going to face, but be aware of them, not afraid of them, aware of them. Now with feet on the ground, you have to have realistic expectations. Well, what are your company's real goals? What do you really want to achieve? How cost-focused are you? How much do you believe in technology? How long-term focused is your organization? Because everything we spoke about in terms of AI is about the future, eh? Realize, like any other investment, there's a long payback here. So you don't invest today and suddenly, you know, your supply chain costs cut down by 30% overnight. This is cumulative. The more you invest, the more technology improves, the more you cut costs, the more predictive you are, the better, the better your organization becomes. But of course, you have to believe in all this. Otherwise, it's not gonna happen. Understand your organization. So are you technologically ready? Do you have the right people? Do you have the right skills? Do you have the right tools? So what's your starting point before you start thinking of artificial intelligence? And if you don't have the right skills or the right people, well, there's the training component, but there's also the issue of recruitment. Eh? Can you bring in new people into your organization. So you need to discuss your needs with your technology suppliers. There isn't a quick fix. There isn't an off the shelf that is perfect for everyone. Every organization is going to have its particular needs. So it is very, very important that you understand your needs how your chain works together, who the relevant stakeholders are, 
and how you're going to link it all together. Look into your data. This is everything. No data, no AI. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So what data do you have in your organization? What data can you link together within your supply chain? Of course, the more regulation that has come in over the years, the more data companies are collecting, the more measures they need to take. That could be good for AI, but no data, you're not going anywhere. So you really need to start from here, I think, to really say, what do we have that we could feed into these predictive systems that we have been talking about? And what does all this ultimately lead to? This is about competitiveness. This is a must. Today, you might think, oh, we can wait a bit. You're not going to wait too much longer. If within the next five years, you are not having discussions within your organization, in the terminology I use today, you might not be around in the next 10 years. So you really need to embrace what artificial intelligence is doing for supply chain. And you need to have this helicopter view of the industry, of technology, of where things are going, and of what your competitors are doing, so that you can build an efficient and effective supply chain with advanced technology, with artificial intelligence, to take your organization way into the future. And that's what I have for you in this one hour masterclass that we have together. So thank you very much for your kind attention. I will go through what has been written um, yes. on the chat. Okay, the chat is all high, maybe send us the recording and all this, but I thought that all this was made clear to you. You will get the recording just to yes. kind of revise that and you will get the uh, copy of the slide. So don't worry about that. It's all going to be coming. It's all going to be coming your way. So okay. David, you, can, uh, you can find all the questions at the uh, Q&A chat. I think yes. we have six questions now. Yes, I'm, I'm having a look at what is uh, put up over. Obviously, I'm going to give verbal answers to what I'm seeing here. What is the major role of AI in the talent supply chain, especially in the global South. Now, in the role, oh, this just suddenly moved away. Oh, oh question. Yeah, you can see it in the answer box. You see, what is the major role of artificial intelligence in the talent supply chain, especially in the global South? Okay, so this moves to the answer. Okay, okay, okay. This is the first time I'm using the Q and A on this, so this is good. Okay. The talent supply chain. Now, this is where you need to see, even from a political point of view, how much does your government believe in technology? Meaning what? What funding is being made available to universities, to technical colleges, to develop the talent? Because you need to begin by developing talent. If you don't have people who are going to be, let's say, the technocrats, it's useless being the manager of a company and say, you know, I want to put AI in my company. And there's nobody around who can do that for you. So this has, you know, this is a link with political initiatives in that respect and whether or not a company wants to remain ahead. Now, of course, you might say, do I have to wait for my government? And this is why I said one of the challenges is training. Because if you want a talent, if you want talent in supply chain, you might have to be developing it internally in your company. You might not have, you can't wait. You might not be able to wait for what the universities and technical colleges are doing. You might have to just move on and do your own thing, or it's not going to happen. And that's my recommendation. You can't wait. Now, of course, if you're working for a global organization or an international company, you're going to have, of course, more support. But if you're a local organization, 
in the Southern Hemisphere, I don't know, maybe you're referring to South America for all I know. Well, what are you going to do about it as an organization? Having said that, at the end of the day, you are going to be dependent on the internet infrastructure in your country as well. What's the bandwidth? What kind of data can you have flowing here? Will it just go off for three hours and you can't operate? So with all due respect to all of you, I don't know where you're from, but these are things that you need to be aware of because sometimes these can be the blockages, uh, the constraints of how much you can develop in a particular country for that matter. Let's see what Lucy told us. AI works under very high ability, perhaps with, will exceed human intelligence. My question, will it need operations audit? If yes, there is need to start thinking of artificial audit. And this is, I think, um, this is why there is the ethical side to artificial intelligence. How are we going to be one step ahead of it? How are we going to know how artificial intelligence has been designed? I'm sure all of you have been following what's happened to the outage of Facebook on the whistleblower issue. That's all artificial intelligence. That is all artificial intelligence. Where is it that? Is it really controlling my life? Is it pushing me to think in a certain way? It might be doing it. I'm not going to speak in terms of facts. Let's say talk in terms of suppositions. It might be doing it without my realization. So who's the guardian of who's looking after society in the face of what technology is doing for us? Yes, it is a good question. And that is why I said, you're gonna look at the political, the legal, the ethical, the regulatory side. They are all important questions that we need to be looking at. So that's definitely very important. How would AI support supply chain in cases as COVID-19? Well, as we all know, COVID-19 hit us with a bang, totally unexpected. Supply chains were affected more than because of not being capable, because of all the controls that suddenly came in. The controls to allow trucks to move from country to country, even within Europe, for that matter, because we needed to check and we needed to check the driver and we needed to check for COVID. So all that came in. But with artificial intelligence, predictive logistics would have coped much better. I'm not going to say it will be foolproof because when something hits you with a bang like this, it will probably take AI some time to learn from it. But I am quite sure that if anyone had AI at that time and was using good predictive analytics, their systems, their internal systems adjusted much faster than everybody else who was panicking and scrambling for answers because of the data and information you have in your system and the way your system will be recognizing this sudden change and therefore will be programmed to react differently. This is the concept of machine learning. Eh? That in a way you don't even need to teach your algorithm to cope with these situations, it will learn on its own. How will small and medium enterprises, Nadia told us, benefit from AI in supply and delivery of their goods and services? Obviously, small and medium organizations are not going to have probably the financial capability to invest in high levels of technology. They can benefit from their partners. You will benefit from your suppliers, maybe, if your <clears throat> suppliers are operating in that way, if your logistic partners are operating in that way. For all you know, you might be supported by partners in your chain to introduce some element of technology. But even small and medium enterprises, remember, the cost of technology keeps going down. 20 years ago, 
If you spoke about an ERP system, well, you have to be a multinational company to talk ERP. <clears throat> Today, you find ERP in small and medium companies. It is designed for small and medium companies too. The technology, the cost of technology <clears throat> will go down and small and medium enterprises will also benefit. They will benefit from the costs. They will benefit from lead time. They will benefit from not having to employ that many people. Of course, they will benefit on a smaller scale, but they will definitely benefit. Roberto, what did you tell us? I believe that AI can result dramatic cost decrease. On the other hand, it's had its capital need as well. Yes, as I explained, the more hardware is needed, the higher are the costs of implementation, definitely. Furthermore, I guess that these hardware will aging much faster than a driver which involves much investment in AI. My question is whether there are already some practical facts about return on capital employed or rather financial KPIs. I would, um, I mean, I'm not an accountant or financial person myself, but I would say any investment in technology, hardware technology, is still being treated the same way as though you bought a computer. <clears throat> it is being treated in the same way from an accounting point of view. You know, and remember the depreciation on technology, especially computing, for example, which is a fair depreciation rate, I would say, even for technology related to artificial intelligence. But again, this is about regulation. This is about how the accounting profession and financial gurus see that all accounting should be done. Whether they will adjust these things in the future or not, I don't know. But I wouldn't say that today there are any specific treatments for anything related to AI technology. AI, Nadia told us, looks very expensive to deploy. Well, scale it. Remember what I said. It is scalable. Start small. You don't need AI everywhere. First, think about what processes can I automate within my organization? Start from there. Maybe some back office operation. How can I integrate with my supplier? What data do they use? How can I talk to my supplier? What systems can we have that could make more predictive analytics. You might not work with 200 variables. You might work with 20 variables, but it is better 20 than two or none at all. So build, Nadia, build it up slowly, especially if you're coming from a small and medium organization. Thomas, how do you believe that AI can influence the end of the supply chain, especially when it comes to sales? Well, the, what we call the last mile is always the hardest uh, where it comes to um, technology. And a lot of research is being done in that respect. However, as I told you, think of 3D printing. 3D printing can revolutionize the way you purchase. You might actually be able to print a book at home. You don't even need to buy the book. Nobody actually needs to deliver it to you. You might be able to print a new shoe at home, obviously, if you have the right materials. So this is the future. Now, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but 20 years time, I don't know. So it can revolutionize the way sales will be done. Well, today, Internet has already revolutionized the way we purchase, the online purchasing concept. Now, mix that with automated vehicles delivering your package or some drone dropping a package on your roof eh? because you've got a landing pad on your roof and your package is done. You get an SMS saying, you know, package has landed kind of thing. So things will change where sales are concerned. How do you think anonymous... Ad Sorry, David, I think we have time for only one more question. Yes, okay. yes. Sorry. I know there are many more, and yeah. I'm really sorry that I can't answer them, answer them all. How do you think AI supply chain data will affect 
agricultural productivity. Well, here again, I think AI can definitely help agriculture, even in terms of the prediction in analysis of the soil, of the crop, of data happening in weather patterns, uh, in helping maybe farmers in determining how best to do things. So we will be seeing agricultural productivity improving because a lot of sophisticated decisions, and again, based on the number of variables that are going to be inputted into the process, a number of decisions, no human being will be able to take on his or her own. No matter how many years of experience you've had plowing the field, there's a limit to our brain. But when your computer can connect with every field in the world, well, that is saying something else, you know, in terms of the data it can gather to predict what you should do in your field. Take that to medicine, take that to law, take that to any kind of situation. And you will be seeing AI revolutionizing every industry we know. Thank you all very much. It's been a pleasure. I, I, there's been tremendous interest with the long list of questions that you have put up, but our time is up. So from my end, thank you all very, very much for attending and for participating. Yeah. Well, Mr. David Dingley, thank you very much. Uh, we have received some very positive comments on your presentation via the chat. Well, thank you everybody for joining and we hope to welcome you again in one of our future masterclass. I think the next one will take place at the beginning of November. So keep an eye on our website and uh, we hope to welcome you soon. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye everyone, thank you.